Welcome to Watch Cards Daily Security, but I'm Corey Knockreiner. Today's story is a new SSL TLS attack called the Drown Attack. Now before I start, sorry I haven't posted videos for a couple days. I've been very, very busy at RSA. Hopefully in the upcoming weeks I can share some content from that conference. But today I'm going to talk about the biggest story this week, which was a cryptographic attack on the TLS SSL implementation of OpenSSL. And they're calling this the Drown Attack. Now Drown stands for Decrypting RSA with obsolete and weakened encryption. And I'm not going to even try to describe this attack in much technical detail. It's very mathematically complex and, and you really have to understand a lot about cryptography to totally get how it works. But I'll be sure to post a deep white paper to this particular attack. So if you want those details, be sure to check out this deep read, this 22 page white paper, which will give you all the facts. But at a high level, what you really have to realize is a few things. First of all, this attack relies on your OpenSSL implementation still using SSL v2.0. And SSL 2.0 has been broken for a long time. Really, hopefully most web servers and email servers and most people that use uh, TLS and SSL for anything should not be using SSL v2 anymore. WatchGuard's products actually disable SSL v2 by default in all of our management interfaces. The other thing this uh, particular attack relies on is some export grade encryption protocols that uh, US government used to require products have in order for them to export. And really, this is kind of a good point on why it's not good for governments to weaken our security. When you do things like purposely weaken encryption protocols so that maybe you can decrypt them later, you really contribute to these kind of weaknesses that result in, in people being able to actually see encrypted sessions. So anyways, without going into all the technical details, the drown attack could allow attackers to actually uh, decrypt your security secure SSL TLS session. So if you have a web server uh, with HTTPS session, if it suffers from this particular attack, a man in the middle person can actually decrypt your session and see what's happening there. He may even be able to decrypt historical sessions as well. However, this attack isn't always trivial to pull off. Depending on implementations, it actually requires that the attacker send tens of thousands of packets to your web server. And even with some distributed computing, it would take hours hours for bad guys to actually decrypt a public key, not the private key, but the public key used for a, a particular session. So it is a kind of complex attack to pull off. That said, if you're using OpenSSL specifically, there is an additional vulnerability in OpenSSL that did make it a little easier for attackers to pull this off. And in fact, it could allow a man at the middle attacker to do a real time attack and actually decrypt a session between one of your customers and your web server, assuming they can actually uh, get in between that particular traffic. So anyways, in the scope of things, this isn't quite as bad as Heartbleed, which was a really bad vulnerability, but this is a significant deal. Really, there's no excuse anymore for using SSL 2.0. You should not use SSL 2.0 anywhere. And by the way, one of the twists to this particular vulnerability is if you have any certificates or public keys that actually still use SSL v2, they can actually affect your web server too. Let's say you use the same public key on a number of servers in your network, maybe your email server and your web server. And if your email server still supports SSL v2 and you have that same certificate on your web server, then technically your web server will be vulnerable. So it's very important that all your servers that use SSL TLS do not use SSL version 2.0 anymore. By the way, for the WatchGuard customers out there, a number of you might be wondering how affected we are. I will say that across the board, our products do not use SSL v2 at all. All of our management er interfaces disable SSL v2. There are a few caveats though. The, the few caveats are first of all, the HTTPS proxy on our uh, XTM device does allow you to turn on SSL v2 if you want. By default, we will not do this because it is an insecure protocol, but we leave the option there for people if they want to do it for compatibility reasons, highly don't recommend doing that. 
The other caveat is again shared certificates. With our Fireboxes, you can actually import one of your public certificates from your web server. And if you do that and you happen to be using a, a certificate that still supports SSL v2, then you actually are exposing the WatchGuard device to this as well. So this is why you need to make sure that your entire infrastructure is no longer using SSL v2. Anyways, it's a fascinating vulnerability and there's a lot of details that I really recommend the, the interested folks check out. So be sure to check out the reference links in the blog post associated with this video. Anyways, that's it for today's story. Thank you for watching. <laughs>